A player from the Hawks who might be leaving Atlanta soon is DeJounte Murray. Over the weeks, there have been more reports that the Hawks are listening to offers. Murray was supposed to help a team that felt stuck in the middle of the league, but his addition hasn't really helped the team take a major leap. His fit with Trey and the Hawks isn't the best, so the front office might move him and retool the roster. Two teams that could be interested in DeJounte are the 76ers and the Knicks. Both teams have enough assets for Atlanta to feel like the initial trade for DeJounte wasn't a total failure. The Celtics have their main core set for the year, but if they were to move someone, Svi Mihailuk could be involved. This year, he's been shooting inefficiently. A player who's a 42% shooter from three last year is far below the league average while shooting less often. Meanwhile, Sam Hauser has been an excellent shooter for Boston. Because of this, Sam has taken a lot of the playing time that could have been shared between the two of them. Keeping in mind that Svi's contract is expiring, I wouldn't be surprised if some teams that needed help from three would try to get him. I look at the Orlando Magic and the Los Angeles Lakers and see two teams that might view Svi as a low risk addition that could help them in the playoff race. Dorian Finney-Smith might not be in Brooklyn by the end of the season. DFS is a 3 and D player that every team trying to get a ring this year would be interested in. Without him, the Mavericks might have lost to the Suns in 2022. Dorian will be turning 31 in the middle of the playoffs. He's been really good for Brooklyn, but he's much more valuable on a team looking to get a run for the title this year. He's a really good role player, but his contract is more expensive than you'd like. The Nets can get younger talent that fits with their long-term plans while moving a contract that will open some money. Two teams that could be interested in DFS are the Sacramento Kings and the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers have been struggling from three this season, and the defensive addition that Dorian brings definitely helps. Sacramento can keep their offense strong while improving on the other side of the ball. I originally said Terry Rozier would be traded, but now that he actually got traded, I gotta pick someone else. That person is Nick Richards. There are some players I think Charlotte will want to move off of, but contracts will cause problems. Some guys like Kyle Lowry and Hayward are more likely to change teams in the buyout market. Meanwhile, Nick is having a really nice season as a rotational center while on a cheap deal for three more years. Two teams looking for a quality backup center are the Nuggets and the Rockets. Over in Chicago, the Bulls have an all-star with an expiring contract. Since they've been struggling in the past few years, DeMar might not re-sign. He'll probably sign his last long-term contract this summer. DeMar will join a team that's seriously in the playoff hunt if he wants to retire with the ring. The two teams I think are possible are the Heat and the Warriors. The Athletic put out an article that said the two teams DeMar would prefer to join if traded are the Miami Heat and the New York Knicks. Since DeMar is open to joining Miami, he might stay, possibly on a more affordable deal. I've given my reasoning for the Heat, but the Warriors might view DeMar as the offensive punch the team needs to be a threat in the West. The Warriors have young players and big contracts to make the deal while being a team in California. One team that's been put in a rough situation is the Cleveland Cavaliers. Injuries and Donovan Mitchell trade rumors have been around the team all season. It seems that both Donovan and Cleveland aren't that interested in trades, but I honestly think Isaac Okoro is more likely to get traded than Dimitch. Ever since the trade for Donovan, Okoro's fit on the team has been weird. He went from their fifth overall pick to a guy that didn't even start consistently. Even with all the injuries they've dealt with, he's improved, but isn't blowing you away offensively. With Jarrett and Mobley on the floor, you can't have another player that can limit your spacing. He might not be Steph Curry, but he is an excellent point of attack defender and finisher at the rim, who's only 23. Because of this, I think Indiana and Charlotte would be interested in Okoro. The Mavericks might trade Maxi Kleba because of how good their other front court players have been. While Maxi had been out due to injury, Dante Exum was having a great return back to the NBA. Meanwhile, Derek Lively is having an all-rookie season. Derek Jones Jr. and Grant Williams have found their spots in Dallas. Every one of those players I mentioned are younger, have been playing better than Maxi, or is on a better deal. He can be moved in a package with other young talent as cap filler to teams like the Wizards or Spurs. The reigning champs don't have that deep of a bench. A player that Denver expected to help off the bench this year was Zeke Naji. Instead of him, the Nuggets have looked to DeAndre Jordan to play the backup five. Now that Naji is having arguably his worst season, they might trade him to a rebuilding team for a better backup center. Charlotte and Washington might be open to offers. The Hornets and Wizards both have some solid centers that they would be okay losing for a player with potential. Originally, I was going to say James Wiseman could be traded to fix Detroit's center problem. They traded Marvin Bagley instead. So now I'll say Bojan is most likely to get traded at the deadline. They really value what he brings on offense, but he's a 34-year-old who's a free agent soon. Two teams that might get him are the Rockets and the 76ers. There are multiple reports that Houston is trying to get Bojan. At the same time, Philly might view Bojan as a way to lose Tobias Harris and still be comfortable. Golden State had a bad year by their standards last season and are having an even worse season now. If the front office wants to keep their championship window alive, they might consider trading away Jonathan Kaminga. With the reports he's unhappy with Steve Kerr and the lack of success the team's had, 
Golden State might use Kaminga to trade for some win now talent. The team made win now moves before when they traded Jordan Poole. I wouldn't be surprised if Andrew Wiggins or Chris Paul were in the deal, since both will get paid a lot of money. The Jazz and Bulls have players the Warriors would be interested in getting. They have the win now talent Golden State could use, and the playing time for a young guy like Kaminga. In Houston, Jock Landale might be on the trade block. After signing him last summer to an expensive deal, he hasn't performed as well as he did in the playoffs. The Rockets had the money and the open spot for a backup center, and they signed Jock expecting him to fill the role nicely. In reality, he's getting paid a lot while not helping out with one of their biggest needs. If the team wants to make a serious playoff push, they can move him and use another asset to find a replacement. The Wizards or Trailblazers can be landing spots if a trade happens. Both teams can eat the contract and would take a pick or player as well. According to reports heading into the season, Buddy Heald would be traded if he and the front office couldn't agree on an extension. A few months later, he hasn't signed anything. If the front office doesn't think that both parties can agree, Buddy could get traded. One of the best shooters in the league on an expiring contract definitely has some value. I could see the Lakers or Magic trying to get a deal done. Both teams are playoff squads that have struggled from deep this season. And I think the Pacers can get enough out of the deal to feel like winners. The Clippers also brought in P.J. Tucker in the Harden deal. He's been great for contenders before, but PJ hasn't been the same this season. His minutes have gone down, his shot has been worse, and he's going to get paid $11 million while collecting DNPs. I don't think he'll stay with the Clippers for much longer, so Golden State or Milwaukee might make a trade. Both teams have struggled on defense this season, so they might view PJ as a 3 and D X factor. Milwaukee definitely could be interested in reuniting with one of the guys who helped them win the championship. While I think teams would consider trading for PJ, it's more likely he might join another team in the buyout market, to be honest. When you look at the other team in LA, the Lakers are having a rough season. After the in-season tournament, they've struggled to get wins. If the team makes any moves, D'Angelo Russell might be gone. The word to describe him in the Lakers this season would be inconsistent. His play, role, and minutes have changed a bunch. Meanwhile, you see his name in trade reports. D'Lo has been playing better, so the Lakers might keep him. At the same time, that could also mean his trade value has gone up. I don't think he should be traded, but he's the most likely to get moved on the team. The Atlanta Hawks or the Brooklyn Nets could get a deal done. D'Angelo could be a part of a DeJounte Murray trade and then moved to a third team. The Nets can bring back their former All-Star and replace Dimwitty's playmaking with a younger player who's a better scorer if Spencer leaves in free agency. Memphis fans have gone through it this season. Because their playoff hopes are practically over, Memphis can be sellers of the deadline and one player that might be traded is Zaire Williams. He was drafted as a project player, but he hasn't consistently produced enough for a team that even without Jaw should be much better. He's still young and has two years left on his deal. Younger rosters looking for defensive help could trade for Zaire. The Portland Trailblazers and Indiana Pacers come to mind. The Heat have been good, but not great. While other contenders have looked great, Miami is sliding in the rankings. I don't know how likely it is to happen, but Nikola Jovic might be traded. If the team wants to make a deal, he's a player with trade value that doesn't impact the current team. The Chicago Bulls or the Portland Trailblazers might be where Jovic ends up. Both teams are heading or are in a rebuild and would be interested in a young wing like Nikola. Milwaukee's defense has dropped off this season. If they want to improve on the other side of the ball, they'll need to make some moves. They have guys who just signed extensions, players on one-year deals, no mind-blowing young talent, and practically no picks to work with. They've been put in a rough spot this season, but the guy I'm saying for Milwaukee is Pat Connington. He's a great shooter, a nice defender, and isn't afraid to attack the rim, but what he can provide can be given by Jay or Malik. At the same time, he's getting paid more than both of them. Two teams that might bring him in are Washington and Orlando. Both teams can use the spacing, but the Wizards can buy him out if they want to. Minnesota has been amazing this season, so don't expect me to say someone like Cat is going to be traded. The guy I think might be gone is Shake Milton. In the first 22 games of the season, he averaged 16 minutes per game. Since then, his minutes have dropped with plenty of DMPs. The Timberwolves move a player who's phased out of the rotation for pennies on the dollar. Two teams that would be interested are Philadelphia and Detroit. Milton had spent five seasons with the Sixers and found much more success. At the same time, the Pistons can get a second rounder or one of Minnesota's younger players that don't get run. Both teams take a flyer on a guy who just might not fit on the Timberwolves. Over in New Orleans, Zion Williamson is having a down season. While the front office has brought in spacers, Zion and Jonas aren't the best fit together. The Pelicans can trade one of the better starting centers in the league to provide better spacing for their all-star. Teams would absolutely be open to bringing Valanchunas in. He gives you great rebounding, some scoring on the block while on an expiring contract. The Thunder can move a big contract with one of their assets to get an excellent backup or possibly a starter for bigger lineups. His rebounding definitely helps as well. The Dubs could use a big man like Jonas. His rebounding and presence in the paint offensively can definitely help out the team. After a fine first year in New York, Evan has only played three games this season with no injuries.
He's a big contract that doesn't even get playing time. What the Knicks can do is take some picks or young talent like Quentin Grimes and put Fournier in the deal to bring in something nice. Utah or Detroit could finalize something. The Jazz have guys like Olenek or possibly Lori if the Knicks make an offer big enough. At the same time, Bojan could get traded to New York. The Thunder also have a bigger contract they'd like to get rid of. That player is Davis Bertans. Davis is getting paid the second most on the team with very little playing time. The Thunder are very competitive this season, so Bertans' contract might get him moved. Put him with one of your young prospects or draft pick and teams will pick up the phone. Two franchises that might be interested are San Antonio and Portland. Gary Harris has a strange place in Orlando. With all their younger guards and forwards, Gary's spot on the team isn't like it was when he joined. He's also much older than the group and getting paid $13 million on an expiring deal. Keeping all those reasons in mind, the Orlando Magic may want to trade him before he possibly walks for nothing. Two teams I think might trade for Gary are the Atlanta Hawks and the Indiana Pacers. Both rosters would like to improve on defense while having excellent playmakers. The 76ers have an important offseason ahead of them, but when it comes to the deadline, I don't expect a massive change. The main rumor I found revolving the Sixers is them trading Kenyon Martin Jr. Tobias Harris might be traded, but I think he'll resign on a smaller deal. Kenyon's averaged 8 minutes a game with the ability to walk this summer. Based on the report by Mark Stein, Philly wants a second round pick in return. Both the Wizards or Hornets may be open to sending a pick to the Sixers. Phoenix fans will probably disagree with me, but I think Grayson Allen might get moved. Nearly every role player can leave this offseason, and Grayson is one of those players. The Suns do have Grayson's bird rights, but he might look for more money than they can spend. As a front office, you wonder how much money you would commit to Grayson Allen when you also have Beal, Book, and the ability to re-sign Eric Gordon. He's been a phenomenal role player, but what Grayson adds can be received by other options currently on this team. If the Suns trade him, I think they can get help signed long term that can improve their defense and create late in games. Two teams that have the assets are the Orlando Magic and the Washington Wizards. Both franchises have issues with shooting while having nice role players. Portland still has a couple pieces from the Dame trade that they can move. One I'd like to highlight is Malcolm Brogdon. I honestly thought he'd be traded before the season started. Malcolm's an excellent shooter, playmaker, and defender that's the reigning sixth man of the year. Now, he's been healthy and is playing some really good basketball. Two teams looking for a backup guard are Minnesota and the Knicks. Both teams have movable contracts and talent to make the deal. A lot of rumors have followed the Kings this season, but they haven't made a move yet. A trade I think they could do might involve moving Davion Mitchell. Their former ninth overall pick doesn't get the playing time he used to. The Sacramento Kings already have enough guards. Any playing time Davion might get can go to Chris Duarte, Keon Ellis, De'Aaron Fox, Malik Monk, or Kevin Herter. The time to trade him is now. Davion has two years left in his deal and is already 25. Fewer teams will view him as a young prospect they can develop if the Kings just have Davion sit on the bench. Two possible trade destinations are Minnesota and Milwaukee. The Timberwolves are looking for a backup point guard while the Bucks need some perimeter defense. The Spurs might trade Doug McDermott. He's a 32-year-old on a rebuilding team with a big expiring contract. It's more likely he'll get bought out, but teams might trade someone on a longer deal with some young talent to move the big contract. I look at the Knicks and the Jazz and see two possible teams that might make a deal similar to what I said. But in all honesty, it's more likely he gets bought out if he does leave San Antonio. One name I expect to be traded this deadline is Bruce Brown. He's a possible X-factor that multiple contending teams will try to get. What he provides was shown during Denver's title run. Now that he's on a rebuilding Raptors squad, Toronto can get a deal that helps their long-term development. They definitely want to move him now before he's able to use his player option this summer. The 76ers or Warriors might get a deal completed. The Utah Jazz could be selling or buying this deadline. If they do sell, one piece that might be gone is Kelly Olynyk. The veteran with playoff experience is in the last year of his deal. His contribution off the bench can help multiple teams in the playoff hunt. Two teams in mind are Boston and Houston, a reunion with his former teams that need help at the center position. Washington also has a player that would be valued highly in the trade market. That player is Tyus Jones. He's arguably the best point guard that's available, especially when you consider the asking price. Like the other players I mentioned, Tyus is a free agent next summer. In the meantime, he can contribute heavily as a low turnover playmaker who could space the floor. The Minnesota Timberwolves and the Phoenix Suns are two teams I think would want to get Tyus. The Suns would love a traditional point guard to help late in game. Minnesota could use a six man that can generate offense. Before you get mad that I said someone could be traded, remember that some players are much more likely to get traded than others. There are probably some teams that won't even make a move at the trade deadline. Let me know who you think can get traded, like, subscribe to the channel, and have a good day.